All right, this is going to be a long video, uh, so make sure you check the timestamps below. Okay, I've written down the points on this so that uh, I can refer because there are plenty of points to cover. The topic is uh, why do people come to UAE? Why do people come to Dubai? I mean, uh, or the question can be rephrased. Should you come to Dubai now that all these problems are there in UAE? Is it worth coming? And I'm pretty sure at some point I will get someone who will say, yeah, you're talking shit about UAE, but you're still providing services to the UAE. Okay. And disclaimer, if you do not know, yes, I do provide services to those who ask. Okay. So now the topic is why do people come to UAE? I've uh, jotted down around 22 points. And I did speak to a couple of my business friends so that I could get a different uh, perspective. So without taking time, here they are. The timestamps are put down below. Number one, why do people come to UAE? The first one is, even though, like I said in the previous video, UAE is racist. Yes, but UAE's racism is better than the racism of most other countries. It's better than Saudi Arabia's racism, which is even more worse. It's like you're a slave there. It's better than even United States racism. I mean, United States, they will portray themselves to be saints, but invariably see what they do. Shooting, killing, murder, and then they justify it with all this bullshit. So UAE's racism is actually better and it's limited to, uh, not limited to, it's existing explicitly in the corporate world which is hardcore, but you do not feel it as they will treat you like shit. It's just that they are lazy. Okay. Or if you get into the legal justice system, otherwise, if you're minding your own business, you don't have to worry. Okay. So the first point is UAE's racism is better than the racism of other countries. The second point, UAE's racism or UAE's imperfections are better than the poverty of most countries. Why does someone from Bangladesh, Africa, uh, India, Pakistan come to UAE? Because they want a better life. What can you earn in uh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka? Especially if you're a starter. And for that matter, people in UK, France, Germany, uh, Denmark, why do they come to UAE? Because UAE offers a, you know, plenty of plus points, which are mentioned uh, later on, I will be telling you. But UAE does offer, so the benefits that it offers the Western people, you're treated superior. And to the people from the East where, uh, not East, why? From the East where they are given a better standard of living, a better life, better money, better opportunities. 100 times better, right? The point number three. Now this one might be a little controversial or you may disagree, but if you know, UAE is ruled by a ruler, it's not democracy and there are a lot of restrictions to freedom. To be honest, that actually is a very good thing. And I've always said it in my videos, I'm glad UAE doesn't give freedom. There does not give, sorry, democracy. The reason being is whichever Arab country has got democracy, it's been messed up thoroughly. For some reason, Arab Muslims have a hot blood where they don't disagree verbally, they disagree with you know, uh, with their hands and their legs and physically. Like, if you see Pakistan or Afghanistan debate, live debate, when they disagree, they start slapping each other and hitting each other. You don't have to take my word, just watch. So, given the fact that UAE has a lot of restrictions, it makes it people live in fear, so they obey the laws. So there is, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. That is the reason why you don't see so much of drama compared to take any other country. Unless, of course, you're taking Switzerland and uh, what do you call that? Uh, Sweden and uh, those are the rare few countries. But I'm talking of the ones which are populated and which are happening. Okay. Number four. This is the biggest one. The salary in UAE is much more higher than most of the countries. Now, why? See, listen, why would someone leave their country in the first place? You're a first class citizen there. Why are you leaving and going as an expatriate? Why don't you straight away jump to uh, Canada or 
Europe or some other country. You, you know, the, the reason is very simple. Why they choose UAE over most of the Middle East countries is because the salary is good. We, most of us, apart from spending time with our family, we spend time at work, right? So given that you spend so much time at work, for what? Why are you sacrificing time with your family and personal time? To earn money. And UAE offers that. Others, why do you think people are, you know, just prefer to die there? Because the money that they earn there, they'll not earn anywhere else. And which comes to the next point. Point number five is the tax free. Now, I know what you'll say, alloy this corporate tax. That, that corporate tax is 5%, uh, sorry, 9%. Compare that to United States. Compare that to Denmark, which is like 50%. Uh, I know what you'll say. Oh, Lloyd, but they, are, they will give you insurance and they'll give you a, a hospital or medical. You know, if you save from your salary, if you save 50%, you wouldn't need to have any insurance. It's automatically, you will be saved. If you save 50% of your salary, you don't have to worry about your old age. In these other countries, it's forced savings. Here in Dubai, they give you the freedom, you do what you want. And given tax-free, here's another point that you don't think about. You know, if you check, go to the Apple website, check the iMac, uh, sorry, MacBook Pro, it's $999, okay, on the website. Guess how much you have to pay here. You have to pay with taxes, maybe it'll go up to $1,200, okay. And then if you check in India, you'll have to pay 35 or 45% tax. So. I'm, I'm just giving you an apple, okay? For example, take any product, take any product. Uh, let's say Nintendo Switch, let's say a laptop, let's say a luxury item, let's say anything. You'll have to pay taxes on top of it. And it's expensive, man. The spare parts are expensive, everything is expensive, given taxes. In India, you have to pay not only the tax on the government, luxury tax, and there are so many other taxes. It, it's so ridiculous when I know that somebody in US He's paying less and I'm paying 20% more and someone in India is paying 50 or 60% more. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? And on top of that, uh, the, you know, most of the technology and other amenities, <laughs> to my surprise, are cheaper in the country where it's closer. The further away you go, obviously shipping charges and all that comes. So UAE is one rare place where if the iPhone launches let's say, uh, today, the same time it launch in Dubai. And uh, I'll give the disaster here. For example, if I have to, the, you know, the LG, there was this LG monitor on a single pole, which you could use and move, and it was great for productivity. I wanted to buy around three of these. To my surprise, I was told by LG, I'm sorry, you don't get it here in Thailand. You only get it in US or Europe or Canada or wherever. I said, okay, why don't you ship it down? He said, then you'll have to pay double the price. In fact, most of the technology that is launched here in, here in Thailand, you'll get it after six months or eight months. Dubai, you'll get it immediately. Then the next point, point number six, which ties up with the previous point. They offer you easy loans. You know, if you have to get a loan in Canada or USA, you need to have a credit history. That means you go to the bank, you give them thousand and they say, I would like to take a loan. They'll say, okay, put a thousand. We'll give you a loan for a thousand. Okay, you have to put thousand one hundred. They'll give you a loan for a thousand. After you have used it and paid it back and they check every month after month after month, you're paying well. Okay, now you can take five thousand. Put five thousand and you'll get five thousand credit. Like that, every time they'll increase it with your credit history. In India, if you have to take a loan, they'll say, okay, we'll give you a loan. What do you have? You have a house? Okay. If you fail to pay the loan, we'll sell off the house. You have land, okay, we'll take that. You have gold, we'll take that. In UAE, you don't have any of that. In UAE, which company are working for? Emirates Airlines? Here, take the loan. Oh, take the credit card. You own one, you own three, or you own loan. Now, in a way, that is bad, but I'll tell you, it gives you access to so much uh, liquidity. And why do you think people take loans and run away? Because of this. It's it's more like a, you call it a shopper's paradise. You can buy a loan, you can enjoy your life. And that is why I have no sympathy or iota of pity for those guys who say, oh, I took a loan, I lost my job, I can't pay it back, no, fuck you. Point number seven. See, 
why UAE? Ask yourself, why UAE and not any other GCC state like Saudi, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman? Compared to all other Muslim countries, UAE is the best. And I've told you this before. Compared to Saudi, much more open-minded. Compared to Oman, more freedom. Uh, like even, just look at the COVID restrictions. Where COVID restrictions were concerned, okay, the UAE was the first country to say, okay, we open up our borders, you do what you want, you do how you want, but be smart and sensible. Which other country, you tell me, in the Middle East has done that? Most of the countries have locked up their borders or they say, no, we'll make it difficult. So UAE offers this privilege, man. And then, um, you're talking facilities, much better in UAE. A modern lifestyle, much better in UAE. You know, you're, you're talking... This I'm saying only in comparison to other Gulf states. Why people are not running to Saudi, even though Saudi announced so many projects and, oh, we are very modern. No, because UAE is much more... Hey, Gaf. Are you... See? The cops. They're very friendly. Okay. Uh, number eight. Okay. Number eight, lifestyle. I know, you thought I was going to get arrested, right? <laughs> okay, number eight is the lifestyle. <sighs> See, UAE's lifestyle, no? Uh, there, there are many points to this. One is lesser population. If you want to know the or experience a disaster of population, look at India, for example. Look at traveling in a train, a crowded train. Just Google search this. Put uh, the crowded streets of India. Put the traffic uh, in Delhi. You know, there's so many people and there's so much of pollution. The, uh, you know, Delhi has so much, it's like smog, it's like black smoke. Your face, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, you go out in Delhi and you come back after you go in a crowded place on a busy day. When you come back, you wipe your face, you wear black, black suit on your face. It's, it's that bad. You, you can't even travel in buses and trains. Uh, without, you know, wondering, oh, is someone going to rob me or push me? It's, it's terrible. It's manky. It's dirty, man. Yeah, this is a fact. You can hate me for all you like. But this is a reality. Then, uh, I, I, I forgot to mention this point in the previous one. UAE is uh, only Islamic namesake. It's actually less Islamic when the doors close. <laughs> Where, where do you think uh, I was able to have my girlfriends and sleep around? If you do quietly, nobody gives a fuck. You can drink alcohol quietly in your, uh, you know, privacy of your room. In fact, UAE is the only country, Arab state, that has allowed temples and churches openly. Yes, there are other uh, countries which are doing in small, a very small way like Qatar. But UAE has taken the leadership role in opening up a grand temple and all that. Where will you get all this? Then yeah, I was talking about lifestyle. One is population, one is, and travel. See, if you stay in Dubai, Dubai is a small place. You can live and commute very easily. Okay, talk about even Australia. I know people who commute for four hours in trains, man. They sleep in the train itself. I mean, that's, that's crazy. And then you have uh, lifestyle, international community. You get Filipinos, Africans, Americans, Canadians, Russians. Why do you think so many uh, cross, like you call it, what cross-cultural or cross-border relationships? You will see a guy having his arm candy from Russia, USA, Canada. Uh, do you see that happening in India or Pakistan? It's very rare. And then the exposure. When you work in these companies, you get exposure to an international flavor of personalities which is not there in most other countries okay then point number nine is cleanliness I, I i don't even know where to start when i tell you that dubai is very very clean at least in the main areas yeah if you go to sonapur and if you go to maybe a poor area or something and those are very few and if Let's say you call the municipality or something and say this area is dirty or something. They take it very serious, especially Dubai, very spick and so Go to a shopping mall, you'll feel like you're in some dreamland. It's like so perfect, man. When you land at the airport, you'll be like, wow, 
this place is like a, a castle, you know? Like, you will not believe your eyes. There's not even uh, the smell of any detergent or anything. It's, there's no, no smell, it's that fresh. Then number 10, security. This, is, this was one of the key things that made UAE very attractive. Now, I know what you'll bring out. Okay, the bombs that are taking place by Yemeni Houthis, that's only started now. But the possibility and probability that you're going to die with a bomb or something is like that uh, two Indians and one Pakistani is a population of what? Uh, nine million, three people got killed. I mean, that way we look at it from car accidents itself. Look at the percentage, much more higher, right? So let's not blow things out of proportion. The security over there is much better for USA. Remember Kyle with a, what is that? Uh, Kyle Witherspoon? Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, Kyle Rittenhouse. Long, funny names. See, this guy took a gun, fucking shot dead uh, guys. He took a gun and then he says, oh, it was self-defense. You'll never get that in UAE. You'll never get someone taking a gun, going to a place where there's a riot and taking a gun and shooting. Even if riots have taken, not riots, protests have taken place, you'll mostly see laborers. They'll just make little noise. But they'll be peaceful, they'll just protest, quietly. I have yet to hear of an incident where someone took a gun and shot everyone. It doesn't happen in UAE, man. And in 50 years, check how many incidents have taken place in USA versus UAE. That will answer your question. Then, number 11. The entertainment spots are for free. The beaches, oh goodness, I, I was a triathlete. I only realized how beautiful the beaches were when I asked to go for practicing. You know, I wish I had taken a video. When the day there was no waves, I still remember. It's my biggest regret I didn't take a, my uh, GoPro that time. When I was swimming, I could see almost like, uh, I don't know, half a kilometer down. It was, it was like, I don't know man. It was like a dream. It was so peaceful and so calm. You could see the sunlight. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. It's unbelievable how beautiful the beaches are. That is something you'll know only if you go there. Uh, even here in Samui, the, the beaches here, there are stones, there are pebbles, there is muck, there is jellyfish. Uh, there it's beautiful and clean, man. The entertainment is for free. You get, a, you know, global village. Okay, you have to pay for entry. But the dancing, singing, you go to the shopping mall. It's all for free, man. Where you can do this in most of the countries. And some of the countries, you might think they are modern. Like when I was in Dublin, Ireland, I thought it was very modern. No, it's a very village. Like even Canada, my friend who's there. They are, it's, we assume it's like uh, New York or Manhattan or, you know, the skyscrapers and what we see in Hollywood. That's not the case, but Dubai is very much that. Yes, the criticism is it's fake, but I'll tell you, it's very modern. Okay, um, so the entertainment is free and even exercise. There's so many clubs, yoga clubs, running clubs. In fact, they had this what, a fitness challenge that is really commendable, man. I know, you must be like, huh? Roy's talking good about UAE. Listen, I like to keep a balanced uh, this thing, you know. You can't just... Ignore the good and only focus on the bad. That's stupidity. Then the next one is, I told you, freedom of religion. Okay, UAE compared to all other places, they actually give you the freedom of religion. Okay, but don't go around converting Muslims. That's a sacred rule you should not break. Point number 13. For employees, it's a beautiful platform, an amazing platform to jump to another country, not just another job. Okay, with another job every three years. If you take a free zone visa every year. But if you want to go to Canada, USA, New Zealand, uh, Europe, from UAE, it's much more easier, much more easier than if you were to do it from your home country. And this is a fact. Why do you think so many people have migrated from Dubai to any other country? If you are in Dubai, it shows stability. Then employer, for employers, this I realized only after making friends who run a business. Many employers have told me, Loy, if you open a business in India, okay, I do not know about other places. 
Okay, I'm, I'm being honest. In India, if you open a business, to break even, it'll take you 10 to 12 years. Okay? Because taxes and competition and how tough it is. In UAE, if you're smart, you can break even in two years. I personally know friends who have done it in two years or less. I'm not talking about small businesses, real well-to-do business. Yes, luck factor also plays, but Dubai is a place for that. I'm telling you, you just have to take $5,000, you can register a company and get visas and start immediately in 24 hours. Where you can do that? Then next one. Number 15 is uh, the visa to come to UAE is comparatively, or the Middle East you can take, is comparatively easy than applying for USA or Canada or Australia. That's a fact. Then, uh, and yes, given the fact that it is the central business hub, they're making it easy for people. Point number 16 is, can be looked upon as a drawback. Like a, can be looked upon as a drawback. And point number 16 is the loopholes. There are plenty of loopholes, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, most of the people do not load the loopholes. Okay, but if you're smart and you know how to play your cards right, the loopholes are amazing. Like simple, I'll ask you a simple thing. How is it possible that, you know, they don't allow tattoos on your hand and all that. No visible tattoos, you're not allowed. Okay, especially above your neck and all that, it can be a problem. How was I able to stay in UAE with tattoos on my face? I stayed there for, I think, eight years, nine years, yeah. Loopholes. How do you think I was able to earn money without having a job? How do you think I was able to get a visa without working for an employer? All these are loopholes of the system. How do you think I was able to make money? See, if you know the loopholes, oh, oh, UAE is paradise. UAE is absolute paradise. That is why people come to me for coaching. How to make money through the loopholes. Okay. And uh, see, another thing about loopholes, and this is on the bigger scale. You know, UAE keeps getting slammed for money laundering. I'll explain to you. You must be thinking, oh, they're bringing droves of cash and they're taking... No, it doesn't operate like that. How... Where the loophole for money laundering is, let's say you want to open up a business or you open, want to open up... A, you want to purchase a property or you want to buy a car. You take one million with you and you show it to them. Nobody is going to ask you where you got the one million from. Even if you go to a bank and you deposit one million, they'll not ask you where you got the one million from. Show me the source of revenue. We have to cross verify. Nothing. Oh, one million. Thank you. Open an account. Oh, one million. I want to start a company. Welcome. Oh, you want to buy a property? Fadal. <laughs> so, where... In any other country, they would question you. What is this? Black money? Where did you get it from? Eh? You eat? Oh, welcome. You want to open? Open. But just don't do anything illegal there. Why do you think so many guys from the mafia and underworld and all that, they are living peacefully there. Even Bin Laden was there uh, in American hospital. Just Google search. I think they've scrubbed away all the evidence for this. He was in American hospital. He got a surgery there. You don't do it. Even Daud Ibrahim was in UAE. You don't do anything illegal. Stay happy in UAE. Nobody will trouble you. Point number 17. It's a melting pot of cultures and experience. I had a coach who was from, I think, uh, uh, where, what islands were there? There was not Jamaica. Uh, I can't get it. Yeah, he was a uh, black athlete. I had friends who were from Australia and Germany. I had uh, girlfriends from Russia, Philippines, Vietnam. Uh, I mean, it's a melting pot of experiences, cultures, even restaurants, even foods, even styles. Like, see the Expo, Expo 2020, the Global Village. It's nothing but all these cultures and traditions and people from around the world because UAE is the central hub. And that you'll not get anywhere else. In your country or where you're staying, how much of this is happening? Point number 18, relaxation and fun. And yes, if you're talking of uh, even sex for that matter, like I told you, if you're smart and you know how to do, oh, it's amazing. And if you have the money, oh, it's paradise. For 25,000 dirhams, you can book a, a nice apartment, no, nice room in Burj Al Arab. Okay, 25,000 dirhams. 
I don't know if it's gone up or down. And oh, if you have the money, you'll get a butler that will take care of you. you. They will bring, you want from Australia lobsters, they'll bring you from there. You want uh, crabs from, I don't know, China, they'll get you. Oh, if you have the money. You want girls, which girl? They'll give you an iPad, choose which girl you want. What do you want her to do? Oh, all, many, everything is there. If you have the money, fuck. The world is at your feet. In fact, which other country do you think boasts of uh, gold-plated ice cream, a uh, gold burger and uh, a cold drink with gold or Indian food with uh, sprinkles of, I don't know. I don't know, when they shit gold comes out, I don't know what that is. But uh, it's, this is a testament to, if you have the money, oh, Dubai will offer you the heavens, you know. Uh, number 19. Number 19 is, this is mainly for young people. You want to live your life of your dreams and you want to live it now, Dubai is the place. I know this one girl, uh, she's young, in her 20s. She was desperate to go to Dubai. She begged and this and that, became my client. Finally moved to Dubai. Oh, she's living the life. She has a sugar daddy and she is traveling around the world. Okay, COVID, slight restrictions. Uh, she is, man, she's become like a multi-millionaire. She's not a slut. But she's very open about, I'll have sugar daddies who I like. Fuck, she's enjoying. Oh, coconut fell down. So, she's living life to the fullest. Yeah, maybe she'll settle down one day. But for now, the life that her parents never lived, her family, her relatives. You might say, oh, this is compromising our values. Fine, you live with your values, you stay poor. She wants to stay rich. So what's wrong? What's wrong with it? The best years of my life, where sports, adventure, excitement, fun, sex, all this was all in Dubai. You'll never have that kind of life anywhere else, I'll tell you that. Point number 20 is, this UAE deserves an applause. The way they handled COVID. Uh, it's one of the first countries to say, okay, fine. COVID restrictions, we'll put it down. Fine, we will adjust the rules here and there. They're really pushing hard to let people live a normal life. In fact, when I speak to all my friends and, uh, you know, people that I know very closely, they're saying, Roy, life is normal. Life is normal in UAE. Everyone's doing their own thing. COVID, yes, you have to put masks, but others, everyone's normal. Tell me, compare that to New Zealand. Compare that to the disasters in some other places. It's not happening in UAE, man. And they really deserve an applause for this. Like I told you. Give credit where credit is due. You might not be comfortable, you will be like, what the fuck law is talking? No. I I like to, you know, keep a balance for you. Whether, you know, even if I look bad, I will tell you the truth. Okay, that's as far as it goes. You, Like I told you, challenge me. Tell me where I'm wrong. Point the specific point and tell me, law, you're wrong here. Fine, I'll admit. You have timestamps, right? Point number 21 is new technology and new lifestyles, everything is experimented in UAE, like Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. Uh, UAE is b wanting to be the hub that embraces this new technology. Futuristic designs, concept cars, uh, concept uh, technology, all launched in UAE, why? You, you know, in fact, you'll be surprised to know, you know, when Samsung came out with a foldable phone, uh, I know the guy was involved in the launch. He said, Loy, they have sold out. Not even 24 hours, they are sold out and there's a booking for up to 2,300 more phones. Just imagine 24 hours, man. What the fuck? <laughs> they, it's, it's crazy, man. You know, the amount of money and the amount of... People want to live a good life. So, and the reason... That is the reason why technology and this cryptocurrency, this boom or this craze is happening in UAE for what? For the same reason. B Binance, that guy. Is worth billions. He's embracing from Singapore. He left. Okay, fine. They are playing around with uh, loopholes, which I told you before. They want to enjoy tax-free money, but that invites a lot of opportunities, right? Point number twenty-two. This is a very big one. If you are really smart, if you are really intelligent, and this I owe this point to one of my friends who is a female. She's saying, if you are really smart, if you are really intelligent, Dubai is a place. She is minting money, minting. When she was back home in her home country, I can't give 
those details. But her country is not poor. Huh? She was not too successful. In Dubai, she is making what? Five five figure income, five figure tax free income, and uh, she is not working with any company. No, she is not a slut. No, she is not a prostitute. No, she is not having a sugar daddy. Business. In fact, one housewife, not registered a company. She is selling through Facebook. Fuck, she is making, uh, I think, three times what I'm making. Just sitting at home, buying and selling. See, if you have the brains, now I'll tell you, fuck. Like they say, you can make money anywhere, but Dubai, the way they make, so oh, that's why people who really have money will never flaunt it. Remember this much. And last and not the least, point number twenty-three, it is nothing but paradise. See, if if I didn't have tattoos and if there was this thing about, okay, uh, I grow old and they'll throw me out. If that was not there, I would have stayed in UAE. In fact, so many expatriates who have left UAE, they left because of this. When you're old, well, what do you do? Where do you go? If to restart, you have to restart before forty. Okay. In my case, this was a point. Not only this. But the fact I had tattoos on my face, and when my passport is going to be renewed, you know, every ten years, before it was the plain face without tattoos, so I could send someone and get it stamped or for anything. But once I had to change my face in the passport with tattoos, any any immigration officer or someone who is there in the government, if they are hardcore Islamic or whatever, they are something gone wrong with their head. There is a this is a haram. This is illegal, and I'd end up with too many complications. But if these two factors are not there, I would never want to leave UAE. Never, never, never. Okay, agreed. Today my career resurgence is because I'm away from UAE. Fine, that's a different point altogether. But I was in my comfort zone, and UAE offered exceptionally amazing confidence. See, simple things like 24-hour electricity, unless of course you're in Ajman. 24 hours, uh, you know, ambulance, medical service, uh, the best of the best. You can earn the lifestyle. You can live like a king. The best girls, the best talent. Uh, you can get it all in UAE if you are smart. If you know how to play your cards. Dubai is paradise, man. That way, it's like Disneyland for the grown-ups. Which is why so many people don't want to leave UAE, no matter what. So these are the points, man, and I'll, I'll tell you. See, you have to give credit where credit is due. UAE is the best. I know you can laugh at me all you want, but this is a fact. In the Middle East, UAE is the best place for a good life, to make money, and to save, provided you know the loopholes of the system and you know how to play your cards right. It's just. Yes, I do highlight the problems, and it's necessary for someone to talk about them because just praising things doesn't work. Set the issues to reality. For me, Dubai gave the best years of my life, and I've said this before, and that is why I admire Sheikh Mohammed, even though so many of you hate him or whatever. So anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. I have told you. Tell me where I'm wrong. If you put the timestamps below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Having said that, you guys take care. This means signing off. Ciao.